Good morning and welcome to worship on this 15th Sunday after Pentecost from Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in beautiful Bellevue, Washington. We're glad to have you join us for worship this week. Our theme this week is forgiveness and mercy. We experience God's wide mercy and marvelous forgiveness as we gather each week in Jesus' name. And now we set our hearts upon the Lord with today's prelude from our organist, Dean Robinson. I invite you to join me now in the brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who live and who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson. After Jacob's death, the brothers of Joseph begged for forgiveness for the crime they had done against him. You intended to do me harm, Joseph said, but God used this as an opportunity to do good and save many lives. A reading from Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. 
But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second lesson. This Christian community has significant struggles with diversity. Here Paul helps us understand that despite different practices in worship and personal piety, we do not judge one another. All Christians belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for all of us, and will judge each of us. A reading from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? 
or you? Why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us we will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel as recorded in St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave... When he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would repay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that, they, that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay the entire debt. So my heavenly Father will do also to every one of you if you do not forgive your brothers or sisters from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The grace that recreates us and the peace that reshapes us be yours. From God, whom we encounter as creator, redeemer, and sustainer, the blessed three, yet ever one. Amen. So, I'm a word person. Not so much... A numbers guy. Now my wife, numbers are her friends. She's a CPA, certified public accountant. She works with numbers. She even plays with them, happily solving even the back of the book Sudoku puzzles. She and numbers get along swimmingly. I struggle with numbers. Beyond the basics, you know, the math you learn in elementary school or can do on your fingers. I'm usually a lot more comfortable with words. But the words of our Lord today, words about numbers, specifically words about forgiveness, math, I have to say, they're a bit of a challenge. The reading this week dovetails with last Sunday's reading and comes right after it in Matthew's Gospel. Both are about forgiveness and reconciliation. Today, Jesus employs a parable in response to a question from Peter about what are the limitations to the commandment to forgive others? Peter's looking to limit forgiveness. Jesus will talk about the magnitude of God's mercy and our call to demonstrate mercy and be forgiving towards others in response. As a reminder, Peter's question was basically this. Within the community of faith, if a sibling hurts me or causes me harm, just how many times do I have to forgive them? So the context is the church and church relationships. Although the principle Jesus will put forward expands beyond the church to all of our relationships. Our church family, yes, but also our birth family, adopted family, or our family of friends. And something else to note here for us. We who are a church family, together the family of faith that is Cross of Christ Lutheran Church. Peter isn't asking a hypothetical question here. He doesn't say, 
Lord, suppose, as unlikely as it seems, someone someday somehow in the church might sin against me or act in a way that hurts me or harms our relationship or holds a different opinion than I do and is antagonistic about it. There's no suppose to it. The church is the people. And people are imperfect. Yes, even church people. And imperfect people act imperfectly. And so our relationships can experience brokenness. And forgiveness is needed to be extended to mend these wounds. You know, Peter is actually well aware of this and will become even more so. In fact, it's more than a little ironic that Peter is the one who suggests a low cap on the number of times one should forgive, since he is also one who will need great forgiveness from Jesus on more than a few occasions. Why, just recently, it was Peter who took Jesus aside and rebuked him, scolded him, for even suggesting that it was God's plan that Messiah should suffer and be killed. And it will be Peter who will publicly deny his Lord three times when these foretold things come to pass. Peter's also a person. So Peter is also imperfect. And being a person, Peter also, like most people, like me, maybe like you, imagines forgiveness and mercy to have their limits. I mean, after all, you can't expect somebody to just keep on forgiving to no end, can you? In response to this kind of thinking behind Peter's question, Jesus tells that parable about someone who forgives a huge debt, a king, and the recipient of this huge mercy one of his slaves. In our reading, we're told that the debt was 10,000 talents. Now, a talent was a measure of money worth about 6,000 denarii. A denarius was the average pay for a day for an average worker. So a talent was 6,000 days wages, or about 16 and a half years earnings for most workers. 10,000 talents then is equal to about 165 years of income for the average working class person. That's a lot to owe somebody and a lot to have that person forgive. What would that translate to in our time and in, in our money? Well, again, I'm not really a numbers guy, but using the internet and my computer's calculator and rounding the figures, I found that the average American household income is about $65,000. Multiply that by 16 and a half years and you get $10,765,000. In another word, a lot. So to no surprise, and I'm sure to Peter or anyone else listening to Jesus as he told this parable, the slave couldn't pay back a son like that. And he faced a terrible, torturous consequence, basically being thrown into debtor's prison along with his whole family or being sold so that the debt could be paid off. He falls on his knees and he begs for mercy and mercy is given. We're told the king is moved, that he, he takes pity, he shows compassion, he extends forgiveness. He sets the slave free, free from debt, free from fear, free to go, free to, to show mercy as mercy has been shown him. Yet that's not what happened next, Jesus said. In fact, even as he's heading out, this newly liberated one encounters someone else who owes him a debt, a hundred denarii. Now that's not nothing. It's a hundred days income, but it's paltry in comparison to what the first slave was forgiven. It's about 0.000167%-ish. Yet the forgiven one insists acting violently. He seizes the other by the throat and then levels the full extent of the legal rights he has against him, throwing not only him but his entire family in jail. Fortunately, there were bystanders, other slaves of the same Lord, and fortunately, they didn't ignore this injustice or mind their own business or turn a blind eye as some do when they witness violence or injustice or the uncalled for use of force or power. They went to the one who could do something. They went to the king, recounted the injustice, and expressed their outrage, which is the sense of the Greek word behind our English phrase, 
they were greatly distressed. You see, this parable could have been about two kinds of injustices, the lack of mercy on the part of the first slave and the lack of action on the part of the bystanders. But instead, they acted. And so did the king, reversing the situation when the one forgiven of so great a debt refused to act in like manner. Well, the overall point of this parable is pretty clear, right? God, the king of creation, is the one who the psalmist in our today's reading describes as being merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. This God extends forgiveness beyond measure, beyond counting, beyond keeping tabs, beyond limits, well beyond what we deserve or could even expect or hope for. And in response, God calls us, we forgiven ones, to be forgiving, to be merciful, to be generous, to be gracious. This is our act of worshipful gratitude and our way of bearing witness to our most merciful Lord. Here's one more fault. Failing to be a person of mercy, a person who practices radical, unmerited, unlimited forgiveness, often results in us being locked up in torture. These days, not literally, of course, but spiritually, emotionally, and relationally. God wants us to be forgiving for the sake of our relationship with our forgiving God and for the sake of our relationship with those whom we forgive and for our own sake as well. Forgiveness is the key that opens a locked up life held captive by grudge holding and score evening and debt payment demanding. Finally, I do want to say that the call to mercifulness is not to be misinterpreted as a call for us to allow ourselves to be repeatedly abused or constantly harmed. It is not to advocate in any way for us to stay in relationships, personal or societal, that are unjust or unhealthy. The clear call to be a person of mercy is clearly not calling us to be abused or victims of bullying or injustice or violence, not in any form. I want to be very clear about that. But I want to be just as clear, as clear as this parable is, as clear as Jesus was, that as we have been forgiven so much and shown so much mercy, our attitudes and our actions ought to be those that extend the same to others. So, brothers and sisters in the faith, may we reflect the mercy of God to others. And may our God, who is indeed merciful and abounding in steadfast love, be honored by the way we forgive one another. God is the God of mercy. And that's something we can all count on all of the time. Thanks be to God. Amen.
drawn together in the compassion of God, let us pray for the world, the church, and for all in need. Each petition ends, hear us, O Lord. The response is, your mercy is great. Let us pray. God of hospitality, you welcome us even when our faith is weak. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of wide welcome and generous inclusion. Strengthen our faith through Bible studies and biblical preaching, individual devotions and small groups, quiet meditation and daily prayer. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. God of creation, be merciful to your world and to us when our actions or inactions cause it and its creatures damage. Heal, renew, and redeem places suffering from wildfires, hurricanes, droughts, and other natural disasters, and from pollution, overconsumption, and human-caused global warming. We especially pray for fellow Washingtonians fleeing from fires, and for those professionals and volunteers bravely fighting them, and for the lands and animals so severely impacted. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. God of reconciliation, make your ways known to the nations, their leaders, and their citizens. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence or revenge. Stir us to speak and to work for the highest aspirations of democracy, equality, liberty, and justice for all. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. God of healing and hope, you forgive iniquities, heal diseases, redeem the lost, and free the oppressed. You are merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Be the presence and the peace to all in need, including our members and their loved ones who have asked for our public prayers. Members Kay Anderson, Anna Barrow, Dennis Barrow, Vigo Bertelson, Alma Constable, Fred Corwin, Linda Ernst, Katie Geisbert, Ed Hahn, Phyllis Hahn, Audrey Harris, Karen Hart, Janice Hines, Joyce Johnson, Priscilla Kainstrom, Jean Lawson, Doug Lieberg, Doris Lundquist, Bill McConnell, Betty McConnell, Judy McNaughton, Wanda Nelson, Marlis Paulson, Phil Chelly, and Bev Walker. Former members, John Boyd, Don Capron, and Jenny, wife of former Cross of Christ pastor, Ivor Haugen. Family members, Tim, son-in-law of Bill and Julie Hockett. Jeff, son of Jerry and Joyce Johnson. Faye, ARC Early Learning Center teacher. Justin, son of Arlen Nordhorn. Marilia, mother of Andrea Pulley. Brad, son-in-law of Phil and Carol Chelly and their daughter, Kristen. Steve, brother-in-law of Bev Walker. Kari, sister of Christy Walker. Diane, mother of Lori Ann Weltson. And all whom we now name to you in our hearts. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. God, who loves us beyond our comprehension, we entrust ourselves and all for whom we pray to your wisdom and your care, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again for all the ways you continue to faithfully support our shared calling as followers of Jesus by supporting Cross of Christ. Thanks again for your ongoing, generous, vital financial support. We know these are uncertain times, and we know that you could choose fear over faith. But you continue to give in ways that testify to your trust in God and your love of your church. Thank you. As we've said often before, our campus may be closed to many activities, but the church isn't closed. And the mission and ministries entrusted to us continue. We continue to put your offerings to work, too, supporting our staff, financing these and other recorded worship services, faith formation opportunities, and fellowship events online, paying the ongoing bills like insurance, electrical, and water, 
and enabling us to reach out and in, in a variety of ways, including new ways we're learning and adapting to. There are several ways that you can make your donations at this time. You can mail a check to Cross of Christ. You can drop your offering envelope in our locked drop box, mailbox in the church parking lot. You can arrange for secure automatic payments at this time or ongoingly with our bookkeeper, Denise Fuentes, or you can give online. Thank you. And thanks too to Dean, who shares now our offering. Each Saturday, we send out an all-member email with a link to Sunday's recorded worship service and important news and announcements. And I want to encourage all of our members to read these to stay connected and informed. But I'll highlight a few for you here. Each September, we install new council with some members continuing and new ones coming on board too. Thank you to those who are serving this year. Congregational President Colin Walker, Vice President Brian Constable, our Secretary, Carol Harris, and members at large. Julia Brewer, Gorman Colling, Lugana Isanika, Doug Lieberg, Bob Shelley, and Don Westby. I and Pastor Judy also serve on council. Please keep your council in prayer, especially as we continue to journey through these uncharted waters. New faith-growing opportunities have been posted this week on the Cross of Christ YouTube channel, the latest episode of the Pastor Study, and the September Guide for Circle Leaders, and anyone else who would like to watch as well for the September Welcome Bible Study from Gather Magazine. Links were sent by email, but you can always go to our YouTube channel or search YouTube for Cross of Christ Lutheran Church Bellevue. The Larks Fellowship Group invites you to join them and me for the premiere of a recently finished recorded project on the life and liturgical art of Ernst Schwitter, the creator and carver of our altar, pulpit, processional cross, and the two gorgeous wall carvings that we own. The premiere, also on our YouTube channel, will be this Saturday, September 19th at 4 p.m. and will be followed by a question and answer time on Zoom. An email with links to both will be sent to you this week. I hope you'll be able to join us for the premiere, or if not, that you'll watch the 55-minute presentation as I really think you'll enjoy it. And hopefully it'll enhance our appreciation for the wonderful collection of Spitter art we have, as well as our understanding of the many symbols that are part of them. Special thanks to Colin, who once more shared his volunteer time and considerable talents as this project's video editor. And now, receive these words of benediction, followed by our closing hymn and sending dialogue. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord's face graciously shine upon you. The Lord's mercy and peace be yours this day and forever. Amen. Jesus said, as I have been sent, so also I send you. By God's grace, through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, we are called to worship God, grow in faith, share the gospel, serve others, welcome all. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.